Assalamu alaikum everyone. In this video, I'm going to quickly show you how you can easily sketch trigonometric graphs and also find their range using the table function on your calculator. Let's see how it works. So you have to go to the table function on your calculator. In my version here, I go to menu and at number nine, I find this table function. When I press the equal button, it shows me f of x equal to something. Now here, I'm going to put that function sine of x. Let's put that here, sine x. And then when I press the equal button, on my version, it's showing me g of x. That's basically uh, giving me an option to uh, enter another function for which I can get 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 uh, values in the same table as well. So basically this is used for uh, getting a table for two functions at a time and, and that's very useful for p3 later on when you do iteration graphs but for now since you only want the graph of sine x i can just skip this and then the next option that i see is start end and step now start means where do you want your x values to start if you want one full cycle from zero degrees to 360 degrees you start from zero and then you press the equal button and you say so it should be 360 you press the equal button again and then it says step step means how much gap do you want between values? So generally for trigonometric graphs, I recommend that you just plot values at a gap of 45 degrees. So you put 45 here. And what happens is when you press the equal button again, you get this nice table for, in which you have values at 45 degree, degree intervals for X and the corresponding Y values, all right? All you have to do now is plot these values and you should just have a rough idea of how the shape of the function looks like. How the shape of the graph looks like just plot these points join them using a curve and there is your graph all right now you don't have to copy this table on your paper you can just copy the values you can just plot the values by looking at the, at the calculator values and then join them using a smooth curve okay and that will be your graph now you can also find the range of this function by looking at these y values you can see that the least y value that i have is minus one and the greatest y value is one so the range of this function would be from minus one to one all right it works similarly for tan as well and for cos as well for tan there will be some values at which you will have an error in your table error means that the function is undefined at that point Whenever you have an error, you will have an asymptote like this on your graph. And close to the asymptotes, your values are either going to be going towards positive infinity or towards negative infinity. Your graph is either going to go towards uh, positive infinity or negative infinity. So you'll understand from the shape of the graph, from the rest of the shape of the graph, whether it's going upwards or downwards, and you would draw the graph using that. All right. So the step that you generally use here is 45 degrees. If it's radians, you say, let's use a step of pi over 4 and you start at zero and at two pi. Now, sometimes what happens is you get some transformation. For example, if you have three cos two x plus two. Now in this case, you're given an interval from zero to pi. So you use the starting value as zero, the end value as pi. Make sure your calculator is in radian mode. But then for step, what you do is your original step is supposed to be pi over four, right? But this is two times x. All you have to do is divide the step by two. Whatever this number is, you divide by two. Your step, therefore, in this case, is supposed to be pi over eight. That's the step that you would use here. Start at zero, end at pi. Let's try this on this calculator. Make sure your calculator is in radian mode for this because the angle is in radian. Okay, so I've got my calculator in radian mode now. Now I put that function here, three cos of two x plus two, skip g of x, start at zero, start at zero, end at pi, and step here that I'm gonna take is pi over eight. And there we go, we've got the values of X and Y. Now in this case, uh, there's a limitation that the table only shows values in decimals. It does, it does not show exact values, but since you know that the values are at an interval of pi over eight, you can write down the, uh, the exact values for X, but then you have the corresponding Y values here on the right side, five, 4.1, 4 .1, and then two, 
minus 0.121 and so on you can cut some of them understand what the shape of the graph is going to look like join them using a curve since you have a basic idea of how the sine graph looks like cos graph looks like tan graph looks like once once you have these values you can just plot those values and get that get that sketch now you can also find the range of the function from this you can see that the least value in this column is negative one right and the greatest value in this column is five so the range of this function is going to be from negative one to positive five and they've asked you for greatest and least values here as well so you would say the greatest value is five and the least value is negative one and then you can sketch the graph after that as well using these values just plot them join the curve using uh, a smooth curve basically all right join the points using a smooth curve similarly you could have something like this as well this is two plus three sine of half x now in this case the interval is from 0 to 4 pi. Our standard step is supposed to be pi over 4 in radians. But here we've got 1 over 2. What that means is we're going to divide this whole thing by 1 over 2. And that gives us, when 2 goes to the numerator, it gives us 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. So in this case, the step that we take is going to be pi over 2. All right. Make a table with step pi over 2. Start at 0, end at 4 pi. You will get a bunch of values. Plot those values and you'll get the shape of the graph and also find the greatest and least values from that table. Okay. Now, this is something that uh, has not happened a lot, but if it happens, if you end up having the sketch graph of a function like this, now it works the same way. You start at pi over six, uh, sorry, you take a step of pi over four divided by this number. So that's pi over four divided by two, that's pi over eight. That's the step that you're going to take. However, instead of starting at zero now, you should start your um, table values from pi over six, right? It's minus pi over six. Minus pi over six means that the graph has shifted pi over six units to the right. So the zero value has shifted by pi over six to the right. So instead of starting at zero, you start at pi over six, all right? And then whatever is the interval given, you input uh, you basically take values inside that interval, but in the table function on your calculator, start from pi over six. All right. Earlier, we did not have anything being added or subtracted with x here, so we started from zero. Here, since you have pi over six being subtracted, you would start from pi over six. If you had pi over four here, you would say start at minus pi over four, and this, the step would be pi over four divided by this number, which in this case turns out to be three pi over four. All right, so that's how you can sketch trigonometric graphs and you can also find the range of trigonometric functions without a lot of thinking. All right, I hope this, I hope you find this video helpful. If uh, that's the case, make sure that you share this with others as well so that more people can, can benefit. Also, you can find a lot of other helpful content on my YouTube channel. Uh, make sure that you have a look, have a look at that and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll see you again in another video. I love us.